And I think that there is something deeper going on in our culture. It's probably the deeper explanation to the question you asked as well, which is that we are all so starved for purpose and meaning yeah, and identity right now that, you know, if you don't bend the knee to the real thing, you're going to bend the knee to something, right? And so, you know, a lot of us, myself included, right, get into this habit of complaining about tyranny in the United States, getting about, about the abuse of governmental power. But that trick only works if you have a population that quietly is hungering to bend the knee to something. You don't pledge allegiance to that flag. You're going to pledge allegiance to something. And there's an old saying, it goes, if you have a hole the size of God in your heart and God does not fill it, mm-hmm. something else will instead. Mm-hmm. Right? The Israelites are lost in the desert. Book of Exodus stuff here. What do they, what do they say? We want to go back and be ruled by the Pharaoh. Yeah. So, so in a certain and make sense, idols and, absolutely, yeah. Uh, absolutely. So, so, yeah, Moses comes down from the mountaintop. What do they do? By the time he's come back, mm-hmm. they've already got the golden calf. So part of this is a culture that sort of demands obeisance. And when we think about freedom from the administrative state or the autocracy of government, we owe ourselves a long, hard look in the mirror and ask ourselves how we achieve freedom from our own impulse to bend the knee because we are hungry for a higher purpose that we're lacking. I think that's the deeper answer to your question. I find it really interesting. I'm going to cut Shane's off. Yeah, See, yeah, he's signaling at me that he has a point. But it's my show now. Yeah. Uh, well, are you kidding me? I, is a this challenge. a mutiny Direct right now? challenge. We'll see uh, about sh- that. Sh- no. What? I think what you're saying is so interesting in context of this uh, whistleblower testimony. You know, Joe Ziegler came out and said, you know, I'm I'm a gay man. I'm a Democrat, and I have received threats. I've I've been told I'm a I'm a traitor to the Democratic Party because I am disrupting the the order and I'm creating division in our country by bringing forth this information. And I can't imagine what kind of pressure you must feel, especially because so many people, right and left, but definitely a lot of people on the left, feel as though their membership to the Democratic Party fills these voids. It gives them a sense of purpose and identity that really they crave. You know, I I would say the left has been masterful at filling this void of identity and purpose. I, I don't agree with the prescription, but Race, gender, sexuality, climate, right? These are the left's prescription for that void. Mm -hmm. And I think where conservatives have erred, to be honest with you, this is part of what pulled me into this race, where conservatives have gone wrong is that we've gotten complacent with saying that, well, we're going to criticize that vision and point out all of the things that are endlessly wrong with it. There's a lot There's a lot we could do. I mean, my first book is about a lot of this. My second book is about a lot of this. Woke Inc., Nation of Victims. Here's what's wrong with that vision of identity grounded on your genetic mm-hmm. attributes. But where we've fallen short <clears throat> is that we haven't yet offered our own alternative vision. 